Truckers of Reddit. What spooky things did you witness on the road? Warning. Long story. TL. Doctor stopped to help a motorist with a possible flat. May have prevented a murder. I service fire equipment, so I drive a box truck and cover parts of PA, New York, O, ND, and WV. I was in rural NWPA, returning from a service call and heading towards the interstate to go home. On the way to this customer, I saw a small pickup truck on the interstate whose right rear tire was steadily deflating. A mile or so before my exit, they pulled off to the side. I didn't stop to see if they needed help and felt a little bad about it. As I drove down this dark, twisty road, I passed a Dodge Tarango pulled over into a barn driveway. There was a person lying on the ground behind it, struggling with something. It looked like the guy was trying to change a tire or get the spare out from under the Durango. Remembering the pickup from earlier, I decided to turn around and see if he needed help. I pulled into the first driveway I saw, about one quarter mile down the road, turned around and headed back. Halfway back, the Durango passed me, going the direction I had originally been headed. I got back to where I had seen the Durango, planning to turn around again. But as I swung into the driveway, my headlights caught a figure lying motionless in the snow. I stopped and jumped out, just as the figure sat up. It was a woman, maybe in her 40s, in a thin, torn black skirt and top. Her hair was mussed, her eye was starting to swell, she had red marks on her throat, and her lip was bleeding. I helped her up, got her into my truck, and cranked up the heat. I had taken my jacket off, so I gave it to her, and she covered her torso and arms. She didn't want to say anything. Her throat was sore, and she was badly frightened. I called 911, and they dispatched a police car. I gave her a bottle of water, and she whispered, thank you, then sat with her head bowed and eyes closed. It took about 15 minutes for the police car to get there, and she stayed silent. As the car pulled in, she said, mostly to herself, he's gonna arrest me. The trooper walked up, and motioned me to exit, asked her if she needed an ambulance, she declined, then asked me what had happened. I explained what I had seen. He wrote everything down, then talked to her for a few minutes. He helped her out of the truck, and into his car. She quietly thanked me for coming back, because she thought, that guy meant to kill her. As far as I know, she wasn't arrested. She was pretty beat up, and the trooper spoke, and handled her, as if she were the victim of an assault. It was almost certainly a transaction, prostitution, or drugs, that had gone badly. I never found out what had happened. I watched the news outlets for that area for a while, but never found anything. I saw a young girl being beaten in the back of a car badly, closed fists to the face repeatedly clear as day, even though it was night my lights lit up their car, followed them hitting the horn, got number plate and rang police, but they got away. Police called me the next day, to say they had investigated, and was told the girl was having a medical emergency and was fine. Thank you for doing the right thing, and the cops for being effing useless. Myself and another truck were traveling HWY1 between Medicine Hat Ab and Brooks Ab on our way home from Saskatchewan, and it's really dark there, since you're 100kms away from any town lights, and then all of a sudden the whole sky lit up as green as grass and a huge fireball streaked over us. We all immediately pulled over, and asked each other WTF was that. Heard on the news the next day it was a meteor the size of office desk, that landed somewhere between Lloyd Minister and Cold Lake. We had never seen anything like it. That would have been amazing to see. Probably a once in a lifetime thing, but I hope not I'd like to see that again. Well just without the world ending destruction it could bring. Warning. Long story. This is gonna get long. Upper Peninsula of Michigan. I was delivering and installing machines for the company I was working for. I was in a 26 foot box truck with 12 machines in the back. I was having trouble with the truck the day before, had it checked out by the rental company, and they said it was all good. Since I was behind schedule due to the truck and problems with installations, I decided to drive late to my next destination. It was about 11 o'clock at night on a state route through the Upper Peninsula. 
there were no street lights, there was no other cars. The headlights from my truck were the only thing illuminating the road. I was already creeped out at the peak of feeling like I was in the middle of nowhere because I was in fact in the middle of nowhere. Every single light on the dashboard of the truck lit up and then it stalled. Now it's pitch black, I'm stopped and the truck isn't restarting. Rather than eat up the battery trying to turn it over, I shut everything down and started making phone calls. As I was calling everyone and anyone that would listen, I sat in the dark night, with the only light being from my hazard lights, I looked up and saw something move in front of the truck, just out of distance of the flashing lights. At first I thought it was my imagination. I finally got a hold of someone, and they told me it would be 2-3 two, two, hours before they could get a mechanic to me. So now I'm sitting in silence, the only noises are clicking the hazard lights are making, and I'm staring out the windshield into a void of darkness, when I see movement again. Just as I was about to crap my pants, my phone rang, and that nearly secured the pants crapping, because it scared the hell out of me. It was a mechanic that wanted me to get out, open the hood, and check some things out. No, I'm not getting out of the truck, with an explanation as to why. He was irritated with me, but I didn't care. So finally after seeing the movement just out of range of the lights one more time, I threw on the headlights with the high beams. The headlights caught three wolves snacking on something that looked like roadkill. I honked the horn and they looked at me like they were irritated more than scared. I was safe. The wolves more than likely weren't going to bother me, but it was spooky just knowing they were there. So I shut the lights off. I would turn the lights on occasionally to check to see if they were still there. I was basically just sitting there listening to the hazard flashes click while surfing my phone. Each time I turned the lights on, the wolves were still there. Just to remind you, I'm in the middle of nowhere. No homes, no business, nothing but trees, wilderness, and wolves. I suddenly heard what I can only equate to a woman's scream of terror that sounded like it came from right behind the truck. Then something slammed into the side of the truck, hard enough to rock it. I wasn't afraid of the truck tipping over, but whatever hit it, hit it hard enough to rock the suspension enough to move me around in the cab. It was a pretty heavy truck. I turned every light that truck had on, slipped it into reverse, so the reverse lights came on, and laid on the horn. I was checking both mirrors, and the only thing I saw was a shadow bolt across the road. I couldn't make out what it technically was, but in my head it was werewolf yeti bigfoot lizard monster that was going to end my life, and it was going to be agonizingly painful the entire time. I also noticed the wolves were gone. From every nature documentary I've watched, the only time predators leave food is when there are bigger slash badder predators around. By this time I was in full Bobby Hill that's my purse, I don't know you, mode. Whatever crossed the road, didn't cross very far off the road. I could hear it thrashing around in the brush, breaking sticks and what sounded to be logs. There was no noise pollution, I only had my window cracked a little bit and I could hear pretty well. I basically had the steering wheel gripped, all the lights on, and was feverishly looking out the windows and through the mirrors to make sure nothing was around the immediate area of the truck. I couldn't see off the road, and the flashlights I had were in the back of the truck in my tool bag. I'd have to get out of the truck to get to them. Finally I saw some headlights through one of my mirrors. It seemed like it took hours for them to close the distance to me. The noise stopped as the headlights approached. It was obviously the mechanic, because no one else was stupid enough to be out there besides me. The mechanic pulled out in front of me, my headlights were shining on him and his truck. As his door opened to step out, we both hear the woman screaming in terror yell again, and the brush thrashing intensified. Whatever it was, it was still closed and pissed. His door immediately closed, and my phone rang. He called my phone asking me what it was. He sounded more panicked than me. I had no clue what it was, and he had no clue what it was. So the mechanic called the police. He wouldn't work on my truck until we could secure the area, which I don't blame him. He didn't like my idea of him getting out of his truck just to check things out. Two Michigan State Police officers showed up. They lit that area up like it was a stadium. I finally stepped out of the truck for the first time since it all started. We heard that scream three more times while the mechanic was working on my truck. Thankfully they were getting further away. The cops had no clue what it was either. They were kind of spooked too. 
the mechanic finally got my truck running, and I made it to my hotel for the night. The next morning I walked the truck for inspection, and the side that was hit, there was an indentation about the size of a basketball. Whatever hit it, didn't hit it hard enough to push all the way through, but it definitely mushed the fiberglass. The indentation was about 7 feet off the ground. I have no idea what it was. I probably never will. I do confidently know that I will never ever drive through the Upper Peninsula at night again. That's the spookiest, the scariest is another long story. Thank you all for watching. Remember to like and subscribe, and to have a great day.